Hi, this is Paul James, and this is an image I captured while giving a photographic workshop in Italy this year. It's the village of Ria Maggiore on the Cinque Terre. We'll be going back every year to give photographic workshops in this area. We'll also be going to Rome, Tuscany, and Venice for workshops each year. I'll be processing this image through Photoshop CS5 and Nick's software. This will give you a sampling of what can be done with the software in both Photoshop CS5 and Nick's software. I hope you're able to join us this year on the workshop. We're going to start by going into Adobe Bridge. And I've selected a folder called Cinque Terre and subfolder Rio Maggiore. I've put six CR2 files, six RAW files in there. You will see the images opened up. I also put the JPEG files in there. I always attach the JPEG files. I brought all six JPEG and CR2 files into Adobe Bridge to view. I'm going to click on the first CR2 file. You'll see it in a larger image up here. I'm going to click on each of the CR2 files and they'll open up side by side and the images will get smaller. If you want to view the thumbnails a little bit larger, you can slide that over you'll get them larger. I don't want to because I want to see them a little larger up on top. I'm going to slide that back. Click on the second CR2 file. There's a little arrow icon down at the bottom to the right. Click on that. Select the next CR2 file. Holding the control key down this whole time. That way it selects each, each image that you click on. This is the final image. It's mostly processed except for a little healing and cloning that I'm going to be doing later on and you can see the difference between the raw files and the finished process files through Photoshop CS5 and Nick software. Now I'm going to view all these. They're all, all the exposures are very similar. They're all good. The only difference is a little bit of the composition. And I'm going to right click and tell it to open and it'll open up in Camera Raw. You'll see all six images. Now that it's opened up into Camera Raw, 6.2 in Adobe Photoshop CS5. I want to look at each of them individually. And in order to do that on your keyboard, there's an up and down left right arrow. I'm going to click the down arrow. It will switch it to each one. And then this one is just a little further down, showing a little bit more of the harbor. And that one, it's a little further up. I don't like that. I want a little bit more of the harbor in the image that I'm going to be working on. That one is still a little too far up. That one looks pretty good. It's down at the bottom. You can work on one of the images, two of the images, three, or all of the images, however many you want. If you go up here and select all, you'll be working on all the images all at the same time. At this point, I'm going to work with 1017. CR2 is the one that I'm going to be uh, using. But I also want to process one at 1013. And I will be processing them both a little bit differently because one I'm just going to do in Photoshop and the other one I'm going to do in Next Software. To start with, I'm going to start in the Basics tab. I'm going to look up here at the histogram. Everything looks really good. The exposure is as good as it's going to get. Uh, you have maybe a little bit of clipping in the shadow areas, which you want in the dark side. No clipping at all up in the highlight areas. I'm going to go ahead and in Clarity, which is the mid-tone contrast, I'm going to click the cursor type in 4. If you look in here really closely, you'll see a change in the mid-tone contrast. See how that brought out the mid-tones right in through that area and through the rest of the image also. Vibrancy, I'm going to click on 4. That brought in mid-tone areas. I'm going to go through your white balance area. I would go ahead and play with each of these individually to see how it affects each image. I usually go with Auto. It brings out the color really nicely for me. I'm going to go next over to Camera Calibration tab. I'm going to go to Adobe Standard. Click on that. Adobe Faithful. You can see how that works. If you go to Landscape, you're going to get a lot more color pop. If you're just working with Photoshop, that's probably the nicest one that I would use. If I'm working with software after I bring it out of Photoshop, Camera Neutral. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to select 1017. I'm going to bring it into Camera Neutral. Makes it look a little bit flat, but I need it like that because if I add better, deeper color, it's going to over-exaggerate it when I process it after I get out of Camera Raw. Now I'm going to go back up to Image 1013, and I'm going to hold the Control key down, click on the image so both images are selected. I'm going to go over to Detail, which is the sharpening area, and it's I have it, my preset at 25 and 1.0, which is minimal. In order to show you what's going to happen with 1013, which I want to sharpen a little bit, I'm going to go over 
If you select the magnifying tool, the zoom tool, right click, go to 100%, bring it into an area that we can see the sharpening effect on it. I'm going to go to 100%. If you look at the screen, if you didn't see the change, you can click off the preview area. You can see how much sharpening has been brought in. It really is a nice sharpening tool. I do like the one in Nix better, so I'm going to be using that on the other image. I'm going to right click back to fit on screen. Then I'm going to tone curve on this. I'm going to leave it on mid-tone contrast. I'm going to go down. If I went to linear, it makes it look a little bit flatter. It brings out some of the shadows, though. I'm going to go back to mid-tone contrast on this one. So I'm going to bring out the shadow area more when I'm using the next software. So I'm going to go to 1017. I'm going to go to linear so that it brings out the shadows, makes it look a little bit flatter for this particular image. Next we're going to go into the hue saturation highlight area, HSL and grayscale. We're going to click on this tab and it opens up the hue saturation luminosity palette. We're going to go up to the target adjustment tool. That's the tool we're going to be using. Right now I have it in luminosity. I'm going to switch to saturation. You can also right click on the screen and make your changes there. I'm going to select the color in that building. Move the slider to the right. It moves the sliders in this palette to the right. Click the preview on and off. It gives a little bit of punch there. We're going to go into the yellow. I'm going to go ahead and go to luminosity. Make that a little bit lighter, a little bit darker here. These are a lot of greens. It's going to affect the greens and the yellows in the buildings. So we really don't want to do that, but I'll show you what it will do. Let's click on it. See how it affects everything through there. Bring it back down. That is all I'm going to do in RAW at this time. If I turned it into a TIFF, I can reopen it up in RAW to do more work later on if I want to. I'm going to go down to the 1017. Click on Control, hold down, left click on the image. So I've selected both 1013 and 1017. I'm going to tell it to open images. It's going to open it up into Photoshop. Before I do anything else, I'm going to go in and save this as a TIFF file. Program shuts down, or if there's a power surge, you're going to lose all your information. And I want to make sure that it's saved each step of the way. I'm going to make this a working file. I'm going to go ahead and save it. I'm going to click OK. That's made that into a TIFF file. On the other image, it's the raw image that I was working on. I'm going to go ahead and save that. I'm going to save that as a working file. I'm going to go ahead and save. Click OK. When shooting buildings, you want the perspective to be right. We used to use 4x5-inch view cameras that had bellows and uh, toggles to uh, adjust so that you could straighten out the angles. Now we can do that in Photoshop. And in order to do so, what we do is create a layer. We go to Layer, New, be a copy. You can just hit the uh, shortcut keys, Control J, create a second layer. Go down to Edit, Free for Transform. I'm going to close that down so I can see the whole image. You want to hold the Control key down, left click and hold on the bottom of the image, and you can pull it out to the right. Then you want to do the same to the left hand side, click and hold. That puts it in perspective a little bit better. Hit the Enter key, and that enters the changes in. After it's entered in, we can look in layers. Click the eyeball off on the top layer, and that's what it looked like before. Those are the subtle changes that we made that make it look more in perspective. Now you want to flatten that image. You want to go in. You can hit this little down arrow. Go down to Flatten Image, or Merge Down. The shortcut is Control e I use Flatten. When you just go to Merge Down, sometimes it doesn't flatten it. I'm going to take it into Nix Software now, into HDR. This is the image done in RAW. If we were just processing just for RAW and not using software afterwards, this is the softer image, unprocessed through RAW, basically. We're going to go to Filter, down to Nix Software. I'm going to go to HDR. That's going to open it up for me in HDR. We can hide the presets, or we can show the presets. You can use this bar to scroll down and see all the different presets. You can also make your own custom presets and load them in. And it takes a little bit of time, but you should go through each one of these and just take a look at it. These are the basic ones, and you can adjust each one. I'm going to go to Realistic Strong. That's a little bit on the dark side for me, so I'm going to take the exposure up so that it's a little bit brighter. I'm going to go down here to the methods. It's at sharp to start with. 
I'm going to take this to 100% and crisp. Click on this icon, it will zoom it back to full screen. I'm going to take exposure up just slightly. There's a dark slider here that I like and add a little bit of depth to the dark areas, gives it rich tones. We can go ahead and warm it up depending on how your eye sees it. You adjust it accordingly. Use each of these sliders, sliding them back and forth. Structure gives more texture. I'm liking that quite a bit. You can play with this all day. I've adjusted it several times and I like it at this particular point. I'm going to go ahead and click OK and open it back up into Photoshop. With this image, unfortunately, it does not come out as a layer. Sometimes I forget to create a layer, duplicate the image, say OK, and then it's duplicated over there. We're going to go back to the original image. I'm going to go to step back. It goes back to the original. Move this down. What I'm going to do is go to the Move tool, which is up at the top. Hold the Shift key down. Left click, hold, and drag puts it right on top of the image. Then we can go ahead and close the copy and then we have the layer on top so we can do adjustments accordingly. We didn't sharpen it in Camera Raw and I'm going to go to the Zoom tool, right click, go to Print Size and then we're going to go up back to Filter, Nick Software, Sharpen. You don't really have to sharpen at this point, you want to do it at the time of printing, but I like a little bit of raw sharpening in it. I like this a little bit better than the Photoshop sharpeners. We have uh, adaptive sharpening and sharpen areas and sharpen edges. I usually leave it right in the middle between the two. It does a nice job. If you click on the preview button and look at the railings, you can see the sharpening that it's done. I'm going to go ahead and click OK and this will open up as another layer on top. Okay, I'm going to bring that in a little bit more. We'll go ahead. We're going to go down to merge down, and again, merge down. It's applying the effect on that. It opens up in three different layers for sharpening. I'm going to click that off. You can see the subtle sharpening that is done. It made it a little bit crisper, but not too crisp. I will do more sharpening with the output sharpener at the time of printing. We're going to go ahead and go over to this little icon, arrow going down. We're going to merge down, take a look at the before and after. Full screen, before and after with just a few minutes uh, in Nux, Nix software. I'm going to go ahead and flatten image at this point. And the last thing I'm going to do to this image is go back into Nix software. I'm going to go ahead and go back into Color Effects Pro. I'm going to go down to Tonal Contrast. What Tonal Contrast does, it gives it a little bit more texture, which I like. I'm going to go ahead, click the preview on and off. I'm going to click OK, and it will open it back up in Layer for me in Photoshop. In the layers, you can click the eyeball on and off to take a look at the effects. If you think it's a little bit too much, bring the slider up here, left click, hold, and you can bring down the opacity. So you can bring it to the stage that you want. I'm going to go ahead and click on this down arrow, go to flatten image. I am going to save it at this point. This is the image through Camera Raw. You could have spent a little bit more time on it, and I do quite often, but I'm finding that the softwares that I use as plugins for Photoshop me a much better effect than Photoshop. I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration of Photoshop CS5 and Nix software on this image of Rio Majori, and I hope you're able to join us on one of our workshops here in the United States. This year we'll be going down to Charleston in the springtime and the Smoky Mountains, and then we're going over to Italy in October to get four photographic workshops, starting in Venice, then down to Tuscany over to the Cinque Terre and ending in Rome. If you want to get information on the workshops, you can find it at european-images.com. If you like the video tutorial, you might want to check out the Nix software products. They're free for 15 days. And if you use my code, European Images, you'll get a 15% discount. This is Paul James. I hope you come join me on one of my photographic workshops. Ciao.